Hi, my name is Sana Ibar and I'm a cardiologist working at the Barbara Streisand Women Heart Center at Ciro Sinai in Los Angeles, and I will be talking about the recommendations and the regional for the treatment of acute SCAD. I have nothing to disclose. There is evolving knowledge of the disease. Uh, as you know, spontaneous coronary artery dissection is a non atherosclerotic cause of acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction, and sudden death. There is increasing evidence uh, showing that SCAD is more common than previously believed, but the true prevalence of the disease remains uncertain. It is associated with female sex, with pregnancy, and with physical and emotional stress triggers. Now, there is increased awareness of SCAD and diagnostic uh, techniques improvements have led uh, to changes in initial and long-term management. The correct uh, diagnosis and the understanding of the pathophysiology are very important to implement treatment, and that's why it's so important to have the suspicion for SCAD. The most common clinical presentation will be a young, vulnerable woman presenting with chest pain. And when I am talking about a vulnerable woman, I am talking about a woman with underlying diseases, such as, for example, a fibromuscular dysplasia or with genetic factors or under hormonal influences, such as pregnancy or hormonal replacement therapy, or with a, a systemic inflammatory disease, for example. Most of them will have a potential trigger. The most commonly reported precipitants are extreme physical activity, which is more common as a trigger in men, or emotional stress, which is more common as a trigger in women. Um, the pathophysiology involves dissection and hematoma for formation within the vessel media rather than the rupture of an atherosclerotic uh, plaque. This dissection and the hematoma formation will cause luminal compression and can cause obstruction of the, of the vessel. The intimal dissection, as you can see on the first uh, angiogram on the right, itself is not universal, and angiography may therefore indicate luminal narrowing instead alone uh, because of the intramural hematoma, which could be misinterpreted as atherosclerotic plaque, la, as you can see, like as you can see on the third image on the on the left, or coronary vasospasm, like the second, like the second image, the image on the middle. There are two theories of how SCAD develops. The first theory is saying that the primary pathological event is the development of a disruption in the vessel wall, what we call intimal tear, which allows blood from the true lumen to enter and generate a false lumen. And the second theory is that the primary event is a spontaneous hemorrhage arising from the vasovasorum within the vessel wall, leading to a secondary intimal tear in some patients. So, as I was saying at the beginning, uh, the most important thing is to have the suspicion for a scab to be able to understand the pathophysiology and to be able to implement the correct treatment. The American Heart Association guidelines for the acute management of both a myocardial infarction and acute coronary syndromes stress the importance of a early invasive revascularization of the culprit vessels. But these recommendations are based on patients with atherothrombotic coronary artery disease. And as I was saying before, SCAT is a non atherosclerotic entity is a different entity. So it is not clear the appropriate recommendations and con a treatment today continues to be empirical. The goal of the acute initial management will be preserving the myocardial perfusion and the cardiac function. And the treatment, it will depend if we are talking about a stable patient or if we have an unstable patient. In cases of stable patients, the preferred strategy of treatment will be conservative, but in cases of unstable patients, uh, the revascularization in most of the cases is recommended. 
What is the rationale for adopting conservative treatment or conservative management? Um, the rationale is the fact that most of the patients will heal the SCAD lesions. Uh, the observational data that we have showed uh, angiographic healing of SCAD lesions in the majority of patients. The time course of healing remains uncertain, but it can be detected within days and it's frequently observed by one month. When comparing um, with invasive treatment or revascularization, as you can see on the graphic on the right, target of vessel revascularization at five years was no different in revascularization or in invasive versus conservative treatment. And in fact, when comparing early and five-year outcomes according to the treatment strategy, as we can see on the table on the, on the left, there were no early deaths among the conservatively managed patients. The rates of adverse events were low in both groups, with no significant differences in deaths, in recurrent SCAD, in heart failure, or in the cardiac function. But remarkably, those treated with revascularization had markedly elevated risk of requiring emergency surgery, primarily because of the failure of the percutaneous intervention. That's why adopting or deciding between conservative versus invasive treatment is so important because the invasive treatment can have some complications as well as the conservative treatment. This graphic illustrates the timing of a SCAD provision event after presentation of the SCAD, indicating that occlusion or new ischemia because of dynamic SCAD lesion changes is highest in the early time period after presentation. As you can see on the graphic, it's going to be higher between the first and the fifth day after the SCAD diagnosis. Um, the risk of clinical deterioration and the need for urgent revascularization will be higher in those patients with isolated intramural hematoma and no intimal dissection at baseline, in those patients with lung lesions and in multivessel SCAD disease. And these patients with these characteristics are considered at higher risk. Given the early complications of recurrent myocardial infarction, may develop in 5 to 10 percent of conservatively managed patients, mostly related to the extension of the dissection, is typically recommended in patient monitoring for a minimum of three to five days as part of the conservative strategy. And this is the rational for the recommendation of three to five days hospitalization after the diagnosis of SCAD, even if we are not doing any active treatment only observation. And when is conservative therapy preferred? Conservative therapy has been considered the preferred strategy for management of acute SCAD in the absence of a large vessel occlusion or in the absence of higher uh, risk uh, characteristics. And why? Because of the elevated risk of acute complications from percutaneous intervention in this setting. And this is why we prefer conservative management in patients with uh, characteristics which are not higher, higher risk characteristics. And now I will be talking about the rational law for invasive management or when we decide about uh, invasive treatment. Uh, we know that up to 14% of patients require urgent in-hospital revascularization, usually because of extension of the dissection. The percutaneous intervention for SCAD has been associated with lower technical success and higher complications than those associated with percutaneous intervention for atherosclerotic lesions. The reasons uh, for this technical failure included wire entry into the false lumen with the extension of the dissection, final loss of flow after stent placement, significant residual stenosis, and also percutaneous intervention has been associated with a higher risk of emergency surgery or emergency coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Given these complications with a percutaneous intervention for SCAD, 
PCI needs to be reserved for a select group of patients. And who are these patients? Patients with recurrent or persistent chest pain, patients with uh, electrocardiographic changes, patients with this dissection of the left, left main or multivessel proximal dissection, and also patients with hemodynamic instability, such as patients with cardiogenic shock or patients with refractory arrhythmias. If percutaneous intervention is not feasible in these patients that we decide for invasive treatment, then we need to consider the surgery, the open surgery. And what is the role of a surgery in SCAT? The evidence that we have is small because it's limited to case reports, to a small case series, to observational studies with a small sample size. But the, the evidence that we have have uh, shown a high incidence of bailout surgery after failed uh, percutaneous interventions. Um, but fewer than 1% of patients with acute SCAD are referred for surgical revascularization. The short-term success that we have with surgery is high, but the long-term patency of bypass graft is poor because recanalization of the native coronary arteries results in competitive flow and subsequent graft uh, occlusion. So the indications for surgery are patients with less main disease or proximal dissections after technical failure of attended percutaneous intervention. When there is a complication of attended percutaneous intervention uh, or in cases of refractory ischemia despite attempted conservative therapy. And these are the indications for surgery. Uh, in addition to the initial management of acute SCAD, either invasively or conservative, the treatment objectives will be alleviating symptoms, managing the, the, the chest pain, for example, improving the short and the long term outcomes, and preventing the recurrence of SCAD. When we consider the medical management, we need to consider the use of anticoagulation, the use of antiplatelet therapy, the use of beta blockers, the use of ACE inhibitors or ARVs, the use of statins, and the use of antianginal therapy. When we are talking about anticoagulation, we need to know that the benefit and most appropriate duration of these therapies in the treatment of SCAD are improved. The treatment of any existing luminal thrombosis here in SCAD is balanced against the hypothetical risk of the dissection extension due to the worsening of intramural bleeding. For these reasons, in the absence of clear alternative indications, expert consensus is that anticoagulation should be discontinued after SCAD has been confirmed on the angiography. The expert consensus uh, regarding the antiplatelet therapy is that we need to consider during the acute phase of SCAD and for up to one year for patients who receive medical treatment. Uh, we can use uh, aspirin alone or aspirin plus clopidogrel in cases of stent placement. Um, the use of beta blockers have shown to reduce the risk of recurrence SCAD. That, that's why uh, the beta blockers are really important in the treatment of SCAD. Um, in cases of SCAD with L left ventricular systolic dysfunction, we need to consider using ACE inhibitors or ARVs such as lisinopril, ramipril, losartan, tamisartan. Uh, given this disease is a non atherosclerotic disease, statins are not recommended in SCAD. And finally, uh, if we have chest pain syndrome, syndrome after SCAD, we need to consider antianginal therapy. Talking about, for example, nitrates uh, or calcium channel, channel blockers or ranolacin, which are really important for the treatment of chest pain. Um, and what is the management of recurrent SCAD? What happens if we have another episode of SCAD? First, I would like to uh, define what is recurrent SCAD. 
and it's defined as a new dissection event that is temporarily separated from the index SCAD event, usually in a different coronary artery, and it's different from SCAD extension. Uh, recurrent SCAD has been reported in up to 30% of uh, cases. Uh, given it tends uh, to occur in different vessels from those in the initial dissection, revascularization has not been shown in long-term follow-up to prevent recurrent myocardial infarction due to SCAD. Uh, given the potential benefit of beta blockers in preventing recurrence, as I was saying before, preferential prescription of beta blockers could be considered for the treatment of hypertension, for example, in patients with SCAT. And finally, I would like to say a few words uh, beyond the acute management for SCAT. Um, all patients who have myocardial infarction caused by SCAT should be referred for cardiac rehab. Referral to cardiac rehab is really important for addressing exercise-induced symptoms to provide feedback on exercise hemodynamic, hemodynamic and for, uh, to individualize the fitness uh, needs. Um, patients with SCAT should generally be advised to avoid prolonged high-intensity high activities, highly competitive or contact sports to avoid exercise in extreme temperatures such as, for example, hot yoga or cold weather that, uh, like skin, uh, and to avoid valsalva maneuvers uh, during lifting or exercise. It is also really important the mental health of SCAD patients, and we need to do a screening treatment and referral of psychological disorders. Because as I was saying at the beginning, one of the, uh, in women, one of the main uh, trigger uh, will be emotional stress. So this is really important to treat to prevent another uh, episode of SCAT. And also, and finally, it's really important to refer our patients to, organi to patient organizations and peer online communities for education, for information of SCAD, and really importantly, for support of our patients. To conclude, I would like to say that maintaining a strong suspicion of a SCAD will ensure the diagnosis is not missed and is key to providing appropriate treatment. Medical management is preferred over attempt at revascularization. Revascularization is needed if ongoing ischemia or infarction, hemodynamic instability, or high-risk anatomy. Care also includes measures to prevent the occurrence of SCAD and improve the patient's quality of life. And dissemination of new knowledge on SCAD through registries will help manage SCAD as a unique pathology. Thank you very much.